go, ladies and gentlemen. Singles action about to get on the way here at Bellatrix. Female Warriors, G-Man, Chris Garrett, Cole Ford and Peter Nixon here to call the action. Here we go, the first look at Bellatrix Female Warriors for this young lady. This is Laura Wellings. A wealth of experience across Europe. And she's going to have a tough competitor in Lady Laurie. I'm to understand she debuted in 2006 in Switzerland. Yeah, is that yeah. right, Carl? Yeah, yeah, absolutely correct. Been a multiple time Swiss Championship Wrestling Ladies Champion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome her opponent. As we await the arrival of competitor number two, she is a native of Germany. Of course, as she brings that flag to ringside here, Lady Laurie set for singles action here at Epic Studios in Norwich. No stranger to Bellatrix, Lady Laurie, former Queen of the Ring. Queen of the Ring 2014. She also held the ECTA title a couple of times, the ICW title and the HEW title. So without any further ado, let's stick it up to Terry Gauchi. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a singles match scheduled for one for one submission, one KO or a disqualification to decide the winner. Introducing first on the left hand side of the ring from Bill, Switzerland. She is the apprentice of Lance Storm, Laura Wellings. <laughs> and introducing her opponent on the right hand side of the ring. She is the pretentious one and former queen of the ring from Bremen, Germany, Lady Laurie! So we've got international action here at Bellatrix Female Warriors. Carl Ford, you've got the stats. Well, as I said, both have held a lot of titles in the past, but Lady Laurie, she's won the Queen of the Ring in Bellatrix, but surprisingly, she's not held a title in Bellatrix. Referee explaining the rules to both competitors here. Below the belt. Shake hands, have a good match, go back to your corners, come out wrestling. Are we going to have a handshake here, folks? There we go. I show respect for both competitors. And the bell sounds, and we're on the way. Laura Wellings versus L Lady Laurie. Pete Nixon, who do you give the edge to in this one? Oh, it's hard to say. Uh, they're both very well experienced. Tremendous grapplers. They throw great suplexes, uh, great strikes. I can't pick a winner here, but this is what Bellatrix is all about. Bringing in the best grapplers from the UK, Europe, and around the world to do battle on our grand stage. Absolutely, Peter Nixon, it's very rare that we don't get a debut of some sort at a Bellatrix event, always bringing in that new talent. Wellings now had the advantage in that last exchange. A drop toe hold, hangs Laurie out on that middle rope. What's she looking for here? No! Oh! I mean, how would you describe that, Mahupi? Hips to the face. It, well, it was a headbutt, but I, I can't describe it any better than that. Or yeah, a it, it, yeah, it was definitely a head and a... Uh, hey, well, yeah. oh, wait a minute. A takedown by Lady Laurie. The Referee apprehended Lady Laurie, laying down the law here, making sure there's no hair pulling. It's Lady Laurie with a clubbing blow to the back. And a second. One. Laurie pulls her back up to a vertical base. Irish whip sends her in to the near left. Follows up with a clothesline. Okay, bring her out. And now Laurie, Irish whip, followed by the back elbow, but hangs on to that left arm. And gives her a clothesline for her trouble. Rolls her over, lateral press. Forearm across the face, didn't get the job done here. Michael Mann says two. 
It's way too early to put away Laura Wellings. Yeah, I mean, when we are making your debut for a new promotion, you're going to put that extra bit of effort in. You're going to have more adrenaline flowing. And we're seeing that from Laura as she gets knocked down again. Three. If relaying the count four, on Laura Wellings here. Five. Up to a count of six. six. Uh, Lady Laura getting in and breaking the count there. And she's got that right arm of Wellings. Oh, God, blimey, you're a p oh, no. Two uppercuts to the right arm of Wellings here. I'm asking you. And she's holding on to that right arm. Look at that left knee go right into the back, into the rotator cuff area, into the latimus dorsi muscles. She's really going to work on that elbow and shoulder of Laura Wellings here. They're really punishing her, keeping her grounded. The kind of game that Laurie likes. I mean, she does like the suplex game, but she's very good at keeping her opponent on the map. First public warning to Lady Laurie. This is what I admire about Lady Laurie, how tenacious she is. She can pick a part, a body part, stay on it, and usually is able to get the submission win. Lady Laurie with a shot, knocks down Laura Wellings here. Reed laying down the law on Lady Laurie here. Ooh, that was a bit tasty, folks, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and business is about to pick up here in this singles match. Retaliation and then one extra. This is turning into a slap fest, Carl Ford. Oh, uh, no, Laura, I'm... Bring them off the boots. Laurie looks a bit dazed from that last one. Wellings, suplex and a beauty. Needs to follow up with a pin. Lateral one. press, one count only. She didn't hook the leg one, there. Two, three laying the count on both competitors. Four, five. And they're both up on five. Action continues. Laurie with the boot. The Irish whip sends her off to the right. And a knee right in the midsection. One, hooks the leg. Two. Two count only. The match two. continues. Laurie needs to stay on her though. She argued with Michael Mann about that count. There was nothing wrong with that count in my opinion. One. This is what I was on about. She's staying on that body part. She's working on the arm. And even though we're quite a few minutes into this one, I, I still can't separate them. No, it's been pretty evenly matched so far. But Wellings is coming back with a house of fire. Here on Lady Laurie. Drop kick, and that stunned the German here. And a second. And Wellings with a house of fire, boot to the midsection. What's she looking for? Spinning net breaker, finds the mark. She needs to follow up with a pin. Referee's laying the count. But hey, wait a minute. Wellings, second turnbuckle on the inside here. What's this? Missile drop kick, finds the mark. Wellings crawling over now. Lateral One. press. Two. Two count only. You can hear the crowd was showing their appreciation for this match before she came off that second rope. And clapping both female warriors. And that's interesting as well. They're clapping them. You can't hear any of them picking a side either. Suplex on a beauty. Two, three, it's what Laurie's best known for four, is throwing those vicious three, suplex. Here comes another. For a fisherman, fisherwoman, excuse me. A spinning fisherwoman suplex, referee. I'm asking you. One, two. Referee laying the count three, on Wellings now. Laurie arguing with the referees, saying the shoulders weren't down. Couldn't tell from my vantage point. Well, the referee's discretion is a lot closer than we are to the action. Wellings now, boot to the midsection. DDT plants a right on her head. One. Lady Laurie is stunned now. Where's, where's Wellings going? 
Looks like Wellens is going to the top floor here, Carl. Yep, she's looking for something big. It paid off earlier with that drop kick, but now she's going all the way to the top. What is she looking for here? Can she put away the queen of the ring? No! No water in the pool. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee has counted out Lady Laurie. Therefore, your winner is Laura Wellings! Well, that's a surprise to me. Laura Wellings was trying to put away Lady Laurie. Didn't need to, because Lady Laurie didn't answer Michael Mann's 10 count. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Laura Wellings! Well, even though she missed that leg drop off the top, Lady Laurie couldn't answer the referee's 10 count. And your winner, the Swiss, Laura Wellings, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a singles match action. Please welcome our first wrestler to the ring. You are about to witness, folks, a technical masterclass here in WAW. As we are about to witness Robbie Dynamite going one on one with the world renowned, world class superstar of Joe E. Legend. And as Dynamite makes his way to the ring here, he has been proven time and time again as a very underrated wrestler here in the UK. And that has left a, uh, a bitter taste in his mouth, so to speak. But that, however, however, Carl, this is, does not diminish his in-ring ability whatsoever. Absolutely not. He's proven himself she said he's just trying to get a bit of traction out for the rich. He's a multi-time British middle heavyweight champion. One of those reigns has spanned several years. Please welcome his opponent to the ring. And that music plays here at Epic Studios here in Norwich. Here he comes! The crowd here at Epic Studios goes wild for the world-renowned, well-respected Joe Legend as he makes his way down the aisle, high-fiving with the fans. Well, I mentioned how Robbie Dynamite's held championships. Well, you can't mention championships without Joe Legend. The guy's held over a dozen titles across the world, in Germany, in Holland, in France, in America, in Canada, in the UK. It's just a phenomenal athlete. Let's take it up to Terry. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a singles match. Scheduled for one fall, one submission, or a disqualification. To decide the winner, introducing first on my right-hand side of the ring, weighing in at 200 pounds, from Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire, Robbie Dynamite! And now introducing his opponent on the left-hand side of the ring, weighing in at 241 pounds, from Toronto, Canada, Joe E. Legend! Nice reaction for Legend here. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait just a minute. Robbie Dynamite with a Pearl Harbor job on Joe Legend as the bell sounds, he jumped in before the bell. That attitude of Robbie Dynamite coming right into your living room, folks. Robbie Dynamite jaw jacking with the fans as well. He is a mean customer. Well, that has only lit up Joe Legend. Look, as he flies back with a flurry of forearms. Irish whip to the far side. Big hip toss. And Legend, what's he going for here? Big elbow, right to the head of Dynamite. Lateral press. Doesn't hold the leg, and it only warrants a two. Come on. 
Well, no, Dynaworks take an exception to the fact that Joey Legend and several other foreign wrestlers get a better reaction from the WAW faithful than he does. It's Legend, big clothesline. He feels the fans should cheer for him just because he's British. Well, maybe he needs a better attitude. Maybe they'll cheer for him then. It's flawed logic as well. There's plenty of British wrestlers they're not too keen on. So Legend with control now, sends him off to the left. Referee apprehending Dynamite because of the hair. Two strikes and Legend is down. Hooks the leg. Two. Joe Legend still in this one. And Dynamite pulling the hair once again. Hits Joe Legend into the turnbuckle that you can see there. And now Dynamite. Where's he going to take Joe Legend? He's looking for a suplex. A snap suplex. Shades of. The dynamite kick Tom Billington. Two, two, two. Only warrants a two here, folks. Dynamite measuring Joe Legend now. Uh -huh. say, I'm surprised at the pace of this match okay, so far. Joe Legend, yeah, he's managed to get some hits in, but he's built no real momentum so far. I totally agree with you there, Axel. As he tries to maintain the, the momentum here. Irish whip reverse sends Legend into the... Wow! Stern and first into the turbo click comes Dynamite. Knee drop. Lateral press. Two count only. Dynamite didn't hold the leg there, and he's complaining to our referee here about the count. And the referee is not going to stand for it. Not here in WAW. And he'd be better served spending that time continuing his offense on legend rather than complaining to the ref. Dynamite is too good to not hook the leg. That was just arrogance. It wasn't a lack of ability, that was just arrogance to not have the leg there. Here comes Dynamite for Lederstein. No water in the pool. Now can Joe Legend capitalise? Looks like he's going to. No, Dynamite pushes Legend off. And Legend crashes down to the canvas here. Dynamite. A scoop. He's going for a body slam. He's got his feet caught on the ropes. And he just spirals him. Twists him into a modified belly to belly throw. That was a very arrogant and cocky pin there from Dynamite. Yeah, but let's give some credit to how innovative that maneuver was. I don't even know what I'd call that. And now look at Dynamite laying the shots in on Legend, but he's not feeling that pain anymore. Tooth and nail, these two guys are going. And now, who's going to give the edge in this one, Carl? Who's going to go down? Who's going to get the momentum? Well, I don't know. I mean, it Possibly Robbie, because the fact he went for another co cover like that. I wonder if he's done it deliberately to try and rile Joe Legend up now. Maybe that's his tactic. Anger Joe Legend, force him to make the error. Here comes Legend. Open hand strike to the top of Dynamite's head. The referee laying the count on Dynamite now. A scoop and a slam. Finds the mark. Keep your eye on Legend. Off the left, off the right, and off the left again. Dr leg drop. A lackadaisical pin, I must say, by Joe Legend. Well, don't say lackadaisical, call it what it is. You said it when Robbie did it, that was an arrogant pin. He didn't hook a leg, wasn't even facing his opponent, wasn't putting full body weight on there. Joe Legend just assumed he had the match won. And to be honest, if it comes back to bite him in the ass, oh, wow. no sympathy for him. Well, that stomp from Legend has rocked Dynamite. And now he is measuring. What's this? Oh, wow, what a kick. Dynamite is out, folks. What's this? The referee had already started the 10 count for the knockout. Under British rules, the referee cannot make a count for the pin. Legend needs to remember where he is. You're in the UK, Legend. UK rules apply. He needs to keep his momentum going. He can't let it affect him. Here comes Legend once again. Dynamite is now back up to his feet. Spinning back elbow by Dynamite. And can Dynamite... What? Spins him round. Dumps him, hooks the leg, he's got it locked off. No. You saw the frustration on Dynamite's face there. He hooked the leg, he even 
Get the cheeky elbow into the side of the face as well. And that wasn't enough to put Joe Legend away. And where is Dynamite going? <laughs> Joe Legend is already on the move here. Dynamite top floor. Legend, cool. legend, legend! A suplex on Dynamite off the top. And where is Legend going to go now? Legend. Legend going up top now. Do you think he's... I think Dynamite's in worse position and got him! With a big leg drop. You he's, see, he's not in position to cover though. If he doesn't make the cover soon, it's not gonna have the same effect. Has that time? And again, the referee's refusing to make the count. Once again, the referee was already making that count for the 10 count knockout. So that has broken the 10 count knockout by doing that. Of course, Dynamite has to get back up to his feet. Exactly. For the pinfall to occur. And what's Legend going for here? Dynamite put the brakes on. Oh, he was very close to hitting the referee there. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dynamite's got his hands and feet all over the ropes. Referee didn't even see it. This is... Oh, ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Robbie Dynamite. Took full advantage there. That misstep, referee Michael Mann nearly got clobbered. That roll-up didn't see it. He ought to be ashamed of himself. What are you talking about? The referee didn't see it, so it's fine. How many limbs did Dynamite have all over the ropes three. there? He used his brain, he got three limbs onto the ropes, got that full leverage, made sure Joe Legend could kick out. If he'd been caught by the referee, that could have been a straight disqualification. Referee's discretion, who knows? However, didn't get caught, picks up the W. Good man, Robbie Dynamite. See how frustrated Joe Legend is there as he makes his way backstage. Crowd still fully behind Joey. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a singles match scheduled for one full, one submission or one KO to decide the winner. Let's have our first female warrior to the ring, please. Well, here we go, folks. More singles action on the way here for Bellatrix female warriors. And making her way to the ring is the Finnish female warrior, Aurora Flame. A great history here at Bellatrix. She's a former two-time Nordic Women's Wrestling Champion. But tonight, she's going to have a real battle because she's got a mystery opponent. How on earth do you prepare for something like that, Pia Nixon? It's impossible to prepare. You can not plan a game plan whatsoever. You're going in blind, essentially. Aurora Frame has had success here. I do believe she can pull out a victory under any circumstance. Just will she do it tonight? Well, she looks ready for action, whatever may come her way. She's got to be prepared for anything thrown at her. Please welcome her opponent. Wait a minute, who's this? Well, the music's changed, but you can see on the tron who it is. I Peter don't Nixon, believe you know it. Anything about this? I cannot believe it, guys. Did you know this was going down? What do you mean did we know? She's she's from the same town as you. How did you not know? Well, she did get a lift with me. Ladies and gentlemen, Penelope has returned to Bellatrix Female Warriors. Guys, I had absolutely no idea this was going down. She hasn't spoken to me in several days. She's kept it a secret from me. Well, the 
fans happy to see Ladies lovely. and gentlemen, this is single match contest scheduled for one for one submission, one KO or a disqualification to decide the winner. Introducing first on my right hand side of the ring from Nokia, Finland, the Nordic warrior, Aurora Flame. <laughs> And introducing our opponents on the left-hand side of the ring, making a return to the ring after 18 months out, a former British champion from Cambridge City, Cambridgeshire, Penelope! Well, the fans happy to see Penelope back here in Bellatrix. I haven't seen her since Bellatrix 10, where she won the British title from Violet O'Hara. New fighting, new punching, new below the belt. Shake hands, go back to your corner, defend yourself at all times. Oh, oh, Michael Mann laying down the rules. And Aurora Flame refusing a handshake here as the bell sounds and we're on the way for this singles contest. Penelope never technically lost that British title. She decided shortly after winning it to take a hiatus from the ring. Yeah, but you just noticed Aurora Flame jumping Penelope right on the bell. She's just going to town on the returning Penelope here. Penelope loves this business. It was hard for her to spend so long away. It must feel absolutely fantastic to be back in that ring, but she's got no offense in yet. Yeah, and Aurora Flame, surely, if you're planning for a mystery opponent, you try and work your way through the roster. You wouldn't think if somebody had left the company would potentially be coming back, so this could be a real uphill challenge for her. Forearm shiver delivered to Penelope by Aurora Flame here. It's got a rock against the ropes here. And here we go, Irish whip. Sends her off to the left. Cross body attempt by Penelope. Aurora's caught the leg, spins Penelope round. Oh! Spinning Enziguri finds the mark. And now Penelope, measuring Flame here, gives her a clothesline. Aurora Flame has eaten a drop kick by Penelope. She's very close to the ropes here. Referee's down, counts the shoulders. And as we said, too close to the ropes there, Carl. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to tell that Penelope's had so much time away. She hasn't missed a step in the opening of this contest. And Aurora Flame looking very, very cautious. I think I'm going to have to give my pick to Penelope. Well, it looks like we're going to go for a test of strength here. Penelope, Aurora I'm asking you, Penelope. has got that submission hold applied, locking that left arm, excuse me, that right arm, I'm you again, with that inverted wrist lock now. My command's checking. Penelope's shoulders aren't down on the canvas. No. Even though it was a submission, if her shoulders stay down, it could be counted as a pin. True say that, Carl Ford. And now, referee is asking Penelope whether she wants to give up now. But she's hanging on, folks. You can see the look on her face now as she tries to make her way back up to a vertical base. Though, oh, a, a shot to the midsection. And now Flame sends her off to the left. Oh, she's caught her. What is this? Spine buster and a beauty. Pinfall attempt. Two count only. Well, I don't understand what she's saying to Michael Bann. I don't think it was complimentary, though. Well, she must have been questioning the count there. Now Aurora waiting for Penelope to get back up to a vertical base. And now she's just clubbing her back down. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! And there's that fire we've seen from Penelope in the past. That's definitely not diminished in her time away, has it, Peter Nixon? Well, it's great to see. One, Penelope had... Two, well, she turned her back on the fans three, uh, before she left, four, which was heartbreaking for me. Five, it's good to see she's embracing the seven, fans again. But she's not going to be embracing nothing after taking that forearm shiver. Her eyes were in the back of her head, folks. And here comes Flame 
Oh, wait a minute. She missed the kick. I think but she didn't miss that two, double axe handle. No, Absolutely, and I think the reason no, Penelope did take no, the break is because no she had turned into something that she didn't like. Just, she didn't like her attitude change. I think that was part of the reason for her break. So, yeah, I think you're right, Tom. I mean, you'd know better than anyone. I mean, you know her outside of Bellatrix. Obviously, she's pretty good at keeping a secret from you because uh, you knew nothing about this. Spinning Uranogi, could this be it, folks? No, Penelope's kicked out. She's still in this one, folks. And Aurora Flame cannot believe it. She's going for the pinfall again, but the referee has already laid the count on Penelope for a knockout. Michael is right to do that. That is classic British wrestling rules. See, Flame wants to get back on her. She's poised and waiting. She's up to her, she's up at a count of seven, but Aurora Flame was waiting for her. And now, Penelope's looking for the reversal or the escape of this hold here. See, she sort of looked around the ring momentarily to try and get her bearings, see where she was in the ring. Didn't need to. Hey, keep your arm, Penelope here. Take down and a beauty. Here comes Penelope measuring flame here. Full head of steam. Oh, she takes a boot right in the face. And that stopped the momentum of the returning Penelope. Drop toe hold. Aurora Flame's in trouble. Is she looking for a, is she looking for a surfboard here, Carl? Yeah, this is one of her trademark moves she's been able to pull off before. But is she going to be able to get flame up? And she's still got that flexibility that she had for well over a year ago when she was last in the ring. Oh my, she's got her up. She's got her up. Referee's asking her whether she wants to give up. Is she going to give up? Referee is right there. She gives. Referee calls for the bell. This one's over. Let's take it up. Here is your team. winner by submission, Penelope. What action we have just witnessed here in this singles contest, folks. Ford, this has been a knockdown drag out to say the least. But what a return from the former British champion Penelope. You gotta wonder, is she hoping to get that belt back? But this time with the support of the fans behind her. First tag team to the ring. Well, here we go, folks. Tag team action about to get underway. And it is England versus Norway, folks. And here come the Norwegians. Eric Isaacson leading the way. And the one with the, well, body paint, not just face paint, is Aaron Frost. Both, both held gold in WAW before. Frost, a former European heavyweight champion. Isaacson, a former world heavyweight champion here in the World Association of Wrestling. This one is going to be so exciting, folks. You're going to have to hang a chain off it. My goodness, because it's the Norwegians versus the English, and the English, of course, are from Norwich, and they are Zach and Roy, the hooligans. And this place is about to erupt. Når du ser en mann som meg står i den ringen her, det er oss to, Erik Isaksen og Aron Frost. Dere skal respektere og klappe for. En bondelandsby som det her tar vi oss av uten like, som vikingene gjorde for
for tusen år siden med å rane, drepe, brenne og myrde. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome their opponents to the ring. Now here come the UK hooligans. And bear in mind, one of the hooligans, Roy Knight, is the man who took the world heavyweight title away from Eric Isaacson back in 2008. Do you think that Isaacson's got a score to settle here tonight? Absolutely. I mean, whenever you lose the title, it's, it's always going to mean more to beat the guy who took it from you. And here they come, folks. The real quality wrestling tag team champions making their way to ringside here in the hometown of Norwich. And they are going crazy for them, folks. And don't forget, around the waist of Zack Knight, the World Heavyweight Championship here at WAW. Right, solidly behind them. You know for a fact, folks, that a riot is going to erupt. Wherever these two brothers go, you know for a fact there is going to be some epic, and I use that term humbly, an epic form of ruckus. Don't forget as well that Roy Knight is the real quality wrestling heavyweight champion as well. A lot of gold around the waists of the hooligans, Roy and Zack Knight. Look at Roy Knight. He is a caged animal ready to be unleashed here. Let's take it up to Terry for the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, this tag team match is scheduled for one for one submission or disqualification to decide the winning team. Introducing first on my left hand side of the ring, weighing in at a combined weight of 450 pounds from Lillestrom and Oslo. That's Eric Isaacson and Aaron Frost, the Norwegians. And introducing now. On my right hand side of the ring, weighing in at a combined weight of 420 pounds from Norwich, England. They are currently the RQW Tag Team Champions and recently voted the Tag Team of the Year, Zach and Roy Knights, the UK Hooligans! What a reaction for the hometown boys from Norwich. And I believe the roof is going to come off this place in moments. Listen to that crowd here at Epic Studios. Frost and Isaacson doing everything they can to try and get this crowd to quiet them down. You might as well tell the sun not to come up in the morning. True say that, Carl Ford. Referee checking the, the both members of each team now wants them both to come together to explain the rules. The appointment official for this one is Michael Mann. Poor Michael Mann. Bell sounds and we're underway. Tag team action. England versus Norway. Gentlemen, here we go. What's that? Roy and Frost starting things out. And as we jock around for a position, are we going to go for a core and elbow tie up? Here we go, we're coming in and we've got the core and elbow. Looks like Frost has got the better of. of Knight here. Referees requested the break, and we've got a clean break here, folks. And listen to that crowd erupt for the hooligans here, folks. And Frost Aaron, Aaron Frost is not happy with that crowd reaction. 
front face lock by Roy into a wrist lock. Only wrenches it round into a series of arm ringers. And he's locked that off into a wrist lock. Frost got to look for the reversal of the escape, but he backs Roy into... Hey, hey, look at this, behind the referee's back. Isaacson going to work on Roy here. And Zach complaining to the referee about the illegal double-team move. And look at that, how... Fro oh, look at Frost biting now. Referee didn't see that either. And look at Frost's left leg as it, as it is used for leverage. As he pushes down with that right arm. Now he's got a side headlock applied on the eldest. The elder, I should say. The two Knight brothers duck underneath. And a second. Oh, through the legs. Drop down. Leapfrog by Roy, my goodness. And a bang, body drop. <coughs> Sends Frost it. into orbit. Roy loves it when the match keeps up, when the match gets to this speed. But if anyone can keep up with him, it's Frost. But... He's not doing that tonight. He's been Se knocked around the place. Second turnbuckle on the inside. Here comes Roy. And he's looking for the... No, Frost has caught him. Jumps him back on his feet, only to drop him. My goodness. That was a beautiful suplex from Aaron Frost there. And let's not forget, before Aaron Frost joined the professional wrestling industry, he was a Norwegian amateur wrestling champion, so he has got a hell of a background in the sport. Hey, wait a minute. Frost, he's not going to... He's not going to dive on Roy Knight. He's... Oh, Roy got out of the way! And Frost eats the guardrail! Big oh. mistake from Frost. How is he on his feet already? He's on three. Oh, no! Oh, you naughty boy! A backdrop on the floor of the Epic Studios here. And that is concrete, ladies and gentlemen. This has broken down. This one's got messy and Ori. Isaacson teeing off. Wait a minute, keep your eye on Zach. Here comes Zach. Oh, my goodness! A hooligan indeed! And Zach Knight is no cruiserweight. That guy is six foot three. We've got carnage on the floor of the Epic Studios in, in Norwich. Frost is rolled back in. He's going to be easy pickings here. You've got to think for the UK hooligans. Zach has levelled the playing field here with that dive. Here comes the younger. Oh, my goodness, look at the agility of the heavyweight champion. What's, what's Zach signalling for here, Axel? Oh, wow! I think he was signalling for a move he used to go for. Oh, wow, all the air rushing out of Frost. That'll do you, folks. Shades of Rowdy Ricky Knight, the hooligan's father, in that sit-down. Zach now. Picks up Frost. Where's he going to go? Open hand shot to the face. Now picks Frost up once again. A scoop and a slam. Roy is on the top rope. Is he looking for that signature hooligan's elbow? He's oh, he's not. Missed the zipper, crossing elbow. And here comes yeah. Isaacson. And if Isaacson's got a score to settle, now's his opportunity to do it. Knee right across the sternum, is this it? Two count only, the match continues. Isaacson, European up got to Roy here. And listen to the crowd here in the Epic Studios, they're going crazy for the hometown guys. And Roy is in trouble. Now Isaacson's got 20 plus years experience in wrestling. And Roy's got a lot himself as well, but there's not going to be many moves that Isaacson hasn't seen. Isaacson's still on the offence, he's just eating that boot from Roy. The power slam, he's just dumped Roy right on his head. A splash. Roy's in trouble. Referee. Referee apprehending. Oh, no, he's going to give him a warning for that. That's the first public warning to Eric Isaacson for not breaking a hold. 
First public warning to the Norwegians. There you go, first public warning for not breaking the hold on the ropes. This is going to be Roy. Roy. What's this? What's this? Oh, I just dumped him like yesterday's newspaper, Axel. And Roy Knight is laying in a crumpled heap. Stopped him before he could get that momentum going again and try and mount the comeback. That's the thing, Roy Knight works best at speed. His reaction times is better than any other wrestler I've ever seen. And now Aaron Frost! Aaron Frost on the outside, behind the referee's back. Pure genius. This is going to be an advantage for him. This is going to help him win this match. Pure genius? Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Anything to help you win a match. There's no extra pay in your packet at the end of the night for good sportsmanship. Suplex by Isaacson on Roy. Lateral press. Hooks the leg. Two count only. Roy... Oh, Roy got up and he crawled into the wrong corner. He's very worse for wear here. And now look at this again behind the referee's back. Look at Frost go to work on Roy here. Well, at one point, Frost and Roy were on friendly terms. Maybe Roy got up and saw a face he recognised. Just was so dazed he went towards it, not realising that it was his opponent. Maybe he's that dazed he didn't realise. Frost probably wanted to the UK Hoodgans. And Zach's just earned his team a public warning for trying to come in and save his brother. Again, the tactics of the Norwegians is paying off. Oh, they were up until that moment. I think Frost is going to have whiplash after that one. Is this a mistake for Roy? He should have made the tag. Here comes Roy, top floor now. Double drop kick. Three men are down. Isaacson's rolled to the outside. Roy... Roy's crawling to that wrong corner again. He's, he needs to turn himself 180 and tag his brother Zach in. Here he comes. Zach reaching for the tag here. All Roy's got to do is look up. He's got it. Here comes his brother Zach. Ducks. And a double cross body. The Norwegians are down. Hang on, hang on what's this? What the heck is going on here? I don't know, we got some music playing. As Zach goes to town on the Norwegians. Wait a minute, who's this coming down? It's Robin Lakeem, Jack Jester, Robbie Dynamite. And company, what the, what on earth is going on here? What the hell's going on? And it, they're doing a number on the hooligans. Well, Mark man calling for Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. It's Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson with a baseball bat. Cleaning house here. Everyone get out of the ring and who can blame them?